Hello, Tom Lavecki here with the latest edition of the Arm Share NBA. Just a little mafia snack for you. This is a quick one. Uh, the show sponsor and channel sponsor is JSV Capital. Shout out to JSV and Jason. If you need loans for your business, looking to do commercial real estate, or frankly, just need money uh, to grow your business or to keep things going, check out jsvcapital.com. I will put a link below. Today, we'll be talking about 10 things you wanted to always know about the Godfather, but did not ask. 50th year anniversary. My wife and I are actually going to go watch it um, in the movie theater. So shout out to Scar Aficionado. Um, they are going to be, um, well, somebody from there, pretty prominent position at the magazine. I won't say names yet. Is scheduled to be on the show soon. This is a big one for me. I'm a huge cigar guy as well as huge cigar aficionado fan. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about cigars, lifestyle, camaraderie, and so forth. So shout out to, to Cigar Aficionado for supplying the great information that we have today. So number one, the word mafia was not used in the actual first, um, first edition of The Godfather. It was negotiated with Joseph Colombo. He said no dice, so the word mafia was never used in the first edition. Number two, shameless plug, check out my interview with Sammy the Bull, approaching 200,000 views. Check it out. But number two, gangsters were inspired by the actual film. Sammy went out and saying it was basically the way we saw the life uh, where there was honor. So it kind of gave wise guys swag. Um, in my opinion, the mob, although they dress historically pretty well and, and were well dressed, the rank and file weren't as in line with that in terms of their courtour, if you will. But after that, as Michael Frincy says, there was a swagger. Guys started wearing fedoras. Guys started dressing better all the way from associates all the way up to the boss. Number three, the horse head was not a prop in the scene um, for Godfather 1. When they did the scene, um, the actor did not know, he did not know that it was going to be a real horse head. As you see in his face, that's part acting, part shock. They used a prop horse head for the, um, the practice runs or the, uh, the, uh, the precursors. But for the actual scene, they did use a real horse head. Um, this is an obvious one. Um, similarities between Johnny Fontaine and uh, Frank Sinatra were obvious to everybody. Uh, but what's interesting is um, the, the scene, you want to act like a man and that kind of stuff. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> um, this part we didn't know. When Puzo was introduced to Sinatra, Sinatra took a little bit of umbrage to being uh, portrayed as Johnny Fontaine and act like a man. And he actually called Mario Puzo a pimp. Interesting enough, Mario Puzo, to my left, your right, and Francis Ford Coppola was, a, Mario Puzo was a book author. Francis Ford Coppola was obviously the director. Neither of them knew any actual uh, gangsters when they co-wrote the script. Um, Puzo was based on Don Corleone, a character uh, essentially based on his mother, who could be both warm and ruthless at the same time, which very often describes Italian women. Uh, the, uh, the lighting and the evocative music composed by Nino Rota was disqualified for the Oscars, for best original score of the Oscars, because he happened to use it uh, 14 years before. So because he used it 14 years before, he couldn't um, use that score because it wasn't an original one but in Godfather Part Two, he could post something else, or they kind of changed the rules, or whatever it was, and they actually won it for Godfather Two, and the rules um, changed. So that little kind of sonnet, if you will, was not original from Godfather One. Obviously, Marlon Brando is a phenomenal, was a phenomenal actor, but they uh, they ad libbed the scene which was done in two takes during a half hour lull in shooting to get it in before break. So he was such a good actor during that scene. You figure that's something you would take 
two, three, four, even much as 10 times to get it right. He nailed it on two tries uh, during his scene. He was shot when Fredo was derelict of his duties. And I think Paulie was out because he was sick. And if you read the book, uh, The Mary Puzo Godfather, they deep dive into Paulie and kind of what they do to him prior to leave the gun and take the cannolis. And um, I believe in the book, he bats um, the caretaker's guy, uh, ex-son-in-law, who dishonors his daughter. So um, it kind of gives more effect to uh, Don Corleone doing something for the uh, funeral director. So when he needs something done for Sonny, it's like, oh my God, I don't, kind of don't want to do it. He's a little begrudgingly. But meanwhile, Don Corleone took care of him when uh, he needed it. Next up, number eight, Francis Ford Coppola almost passed on the making of the sequel of Godfather 2. He actually suggested Martin Scorsese, which probably did a dope job, uh, take it over. But when the studio passed, when the studio passed, uh, pressed them because they really wanted Coppola to do it, he leveraged his, I guess, he leveraged his fame for the first one and his ability to execute on the first one. For a multi-million dollar payday, he had full free reign on production and green light to make his pet project, The Conversation, So, which I don't, never heard of, but nevertheless, I guess it was important to him. And the movie made history and became the first sequel to ever take home an Oscar for Best Picture. So, yeah, he, he bluffed, whether it was a bluff with Martin Scorsese or whether he actually really wanted him to do it and he's willing to walk away. Either way, it worked. And um, kind of like a boss-ass mafia move, in my opinion. Richard Castellano, who played the underboss Clemenza, was actually related to Paul, well, Constantino Paul Castellano. Clemenza was written out of the sequel that was you no know, heart attack when he asked for too much money. Stupid move on his part. If he asked for one to ask high, they came low. He could have, you know, probably got in for a lower price. And back then, you kind of worried about the movie and what you got made. But again, unfortunately, it passed um, in real life, I understand. But nevertheless, um, he was written out due to asking too much money. And yes, he was related to Paul Castellano. And Richard Castellano was the actor. This is interesting. So number 10. So Sofia Coppola, who never should have been in three, was actually in all three Godfathers. One, she was a baby at the christening, the baptism. Number two, she was a stowaway when Vito was coming over. And then, of course, number three, when she was a horrific actor as Michael's wife. So if you want to read this and other stories about The Godfather, check out Scar Aficionado. It's on your newsstands, and they do a great job. And stay tuned. I have a really big interview uh, there coming from Scar Aficionado. I have a 1926, um, what was it? God, I'm drawing a blank. My cigar that my wife got me. One of my favorite cigars. 1926 something or other. I'll I'll show it on the next show. Um, really excited to have it. I'm going to have it when I uh, either interview during the Cigar Aficionado interview. So I'll do it outside. Uh, or I'll have it after. But again, I'm really excited about the interview. Also, quick announcement. going to be having a thing called Mafia Wars. It's going to be, we're going to look at either individual gangsters. Could be like. Gambino, Carl Gambino versus Tony Ricardo. Look at different crews, maybe Springville versus Tanglewood or families, maybe 50 hours Lucchese's first to 80 hours Gambino's. And then we have some experts on. And if it's done correctly and it's live and we have enough people, we're going to have you vote on the winners. So stay tuned for Mafia Wars. This is the Armchair NBA. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned on some great content. If you haven't already, check out my interview with Sammy the Bull. It's approaching 200,000 views. I would like to get over that number shortly. And then lastly, check out the show's sponsor, JSV Capital. Um, as they say, they have the moniker Loans Without the Broken Bones. So this was the latest Mafia Snack here on the Armchair NBA.